Hi, in this video we'll take a look at how you can read and write into Parquet format using Apache Spark. I've covered the details of uh, using Spark and Parquet uh, in a different video um, and that video provides a lot more context into what Parquet is and some of the benefits so highly recommend you take a look at the video uh, you'll find the link in the description below and for just a quick context if you're not very familiar with Parquet it's um, high performance column in our storage format, uh, very popular in uh, big data environments and uh, it's highly optimized for doing analytical style queries uh, and behind the scene because of the nature of how it stores uh, in a columnar format provides a lot more um, performant queries that you can run as well as uh, abilities to do compression and various other IO based optimizations. So that's Parquet in a nutshell. However, in this video, we'll take a look at how you can read and write into Parquet format using Apache Spark. Specifically, we'll take a look at how you can use the data frame functionality to save um, data into a Parquet format. So that's using the data frame capability. Now, the environment which I'm running, um, I've, I've actually got an environment uh, which is uh, based off of uh, Cloudera's uh, quick start Docker image, so it's uh, it's got uh, Hadoop and HDFS. However, if you're running it locally on your dev box, uh, and if it does not have an HDFS or Hadoop installed, it'll still work fine. Um, just uh, make sure that you look in the right path. Uh, again, I would imagine that if you're looking at using Parquet uh, file formats, uh, you are in an environment which has Hadoop. However, again, just highlighting that particularly in dev environments, you may or may not uh, have Hadoop and the code will still function uh, just the same. Uh, also, um, worthwhile highlighting that uh, the, the Cloudera Docker image which I'm using, I provided a link in the description to another video which I cover how you can um, get started with uh, the Cloudera's um, quick start using Docker. So I've, I've already logged into the Docker image um, and uh, I've started Spark Shell and uh, um, unlike maybe your local um, Spark uh, within uh, the environment, you already have a SQL context already created. If not, um, your code will need to create the SQL context. All right, so that's uh, broadly uh, the context. Let's actually dive into some code. Uh, again, for purposes of this demo, I'm not creating a, 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 a you know, full-blown application. I will just use Spark Shell uh, to run much of this code. So I'll explain the code as we go along. Um, so one, uh, we need to generate some sample data for us to work with. So I'll just copy the two lines there. So one will create a case class. Um, and in the case class, we've just defined name, age, and sex. And uh, then finally, we'll generate some data that we can work with. Uh, so uh, print -in. So uh, the data again is just um, uh, three records that we've just added. Uh, it's uh, behind the scene, it creates um, a sequence list. Um, that's the three sample data that we have. And uh, now that we have the data, let's um, create a data frame. And uh, once we have the data frame uh, created, we can then uh, save that into Parquet format. Um, so again, uh, let's just uh, give it a couple of seconds for the data frame to be created. Again, this is just one way of uh, quickly creating some data. Uh, obviously in the real world, um, you're probably going to have much of this data sitting either in HDFS, maybe it could be streamed, it's coming in from large uh, file formats, etc. But uh, again, for purposes of a quick demonstration, we had just mocked up some sample data. So now that the data is um, in, uh, in the data frame, we can just quickly show the data. You can see we have uh, the three, three records and uh, the three columns. Um, given that we have used a case class, you may remember that uh, we have a case class where we define a person and it's uh, tightly typed. So if we were to use df print schema, so uh, again, it's based off of uh, the, the case class. So it uses the same types and there was no inferencing. So it uh, clearly picked up the right types of string, integer and string. All right, all good. 
Um, and then finally, let's actually save the data in Parquet. And a couple of different ways that we can save it. We can save it as new, overwrite, or append. I'm going to choose append. Um, and uh, for the save mode, um, we need to import um, this line here. By default, it's not uh, imported, so good to import that. And finally, using the data frame functionality, let's actually write into Parquet format. So again, um, if your data frame has uh, multiple columns uh, or more columns, you can specify it here. But um, since the data frame that we are working with in this example has three columns, I've specified that. Let's select all the three columns. Uh, write that in a pen mode and uh, use the parquet format and uh, save it into uh, this particular path. So again, um, this is something you'll want to keep in mind depending on whether you have uh, Hadoop running or if you're running it on your local machine. Uh, so in this particular environment, I've got um, Hadoop already uh, installed and uh, HDFS of course running. Uh, so a quick way to verify that is um, I can use Hue uh, so Hue comes installed again if um, you can install that separately or if you're using the Cloudera uh, quick start uh, it comes pre-installed uh, so Hue is uh, really helpful to uh, quickly um, look into not just um, uh, the various data sources but also uh, there's a good browser to look at uh, HDFS um, so here you can see that it's uh, created um, a folder here so if you don't have Hue and you would like to look at it uh, from the terminal directly, uh, you can issue uh, the Hadoop uh, file system ls command. So um, if, if you look at uh, the temp folder, we should see uh, the person folder that's created. Let's uh, give it a couple of seconds for it to kick off. Yep, here we are. So we have the persons folder. So again, I'm, I'm for the rest of the video, I'm going to show Hue, but again, you could of course uh, navigate to the Hadoop folder um, and browse the folder using the Hadoop FS or HDFS uh, DFS commands. Um, and again, uh, within the person folder, again, this is Parquet format. So again, that's uh, really a folder which internally can contain uh, one or more Parquet files. Uh, again, it uh, works similar to how other Hadoop file writes work. So you have a part file and each part file is uh, of type Parquet. Uh, additionally, you might find some metadata there, uh, but um, I'll leave this for discussion in a future video but you, you can ignore pretty much what's uh, under that folder so for purpose this of our conversations that's uh, for, uh, you know the folder that contains all the parquet files um, so now we've written into parquet now keep in mind that uh, that's just one way that uh, we can write the data um, if you're if you plan to write the data for optimized querying say for example if you want to utilize it in an environment which uses hive um, chances are if you have millions uh, tens of millions hundreds of millions of rows of data um, you will want to optimize it by uh, partitioning it based on most frequently queried filters and uh, columns uh, so as an example if you wanted to partition the data. Uh, again, this is uh, not particularly interesting for today's demo, but uh, again, this is more relevant if you're using, uh, say, Hive, for example, and you want to partition that column. So uh, one of the ways that we can partition is uh, you can specify the partition by, and uh, in this case, I've specified only one column. However, if you had multiple columns, you can uh, separate them by commas and add, add the required column. So let's run that as well. Uh, so if I run that, uh, right, so now it's actually uh, created the same parquet format, but uh, we have also uh, partitioned it by one of the columns. So if uh, I open that data here in Hive, I'm sorry, in, uh, in HDFS uh, through Hue, you can see that uh, the data is uh, partitioned, right? Right, so uh, that's that's it for writing the data. So let's take a quick example of uh, reading the same data. Uh, so um, again, I mentioned that uh, within uh, within the Spark session that I've opened, we already have a Spark context. So uh, so we can put context 
it has already been created for us and um, by default it uh, sets it to the hive context here um, so I don't have to do a, uh, I don't have to initialize so hence uh, this code is commented here uh, however right now I'm actually querying the data that's uh, that's already been saved so you remember from this step we've uh, created uh, a parquet format uh, using the data frame so let's actually read the content of that parquet file into uh, a, a different uh, data frame so let's run that here paste right so do you have show so here you can see it's uh, pretty much picked up the data from HDFS and uh, it's pulled that data into a data frame so that covers a quick example of how you can read and write data uh, into parquet format using spark um, so again just before wrapping up just a quick reminder again that uh, if you don't have uh, um, HDFS by default it'll it'll try to use a local path so look at your local temp folder uh, in your local hard disk uh, and you should be able to find the parquet files uh, sitting in the local temp folder uh, again which is quite handy if you're in a dev environment and you don't have uh, HDFS installed uh, so that's a wrap for this video hope you've enjoyed this video look forward to seeing you on the next video thanks for watching